Indoor gardeners have a new problem that they have to solve. In the good old days, we used fluorescent fixtures, and most of the manufacturers produced the same quality of bulbs. The light was pretty much the same, and more importantly, the intensity from those bulbs was pretty much the same. So I could tell you that I grow my African violet six inches away from the bulb, and I use two bulbs. And you could go out and buy a shop light and duplicate that, and your results would be the same, because the bulbs are the same. Now that we've switched to LED bulbs, that's no longer true. There is a wide, wide range of quality when we're talking about LEDs. I have a light meter here. And I went over to my shop lights. This is a two bulb LED fixture. And I took a measurement and I got 7,000 lux. Then I went over here to my true grow lights and I turned them right up. I got 70,000 lux. Now both measurements were done six inches from the lamps in the center of the lamp. But you can see the wide range of light we have here. Not only that, but there's a difference in light spectra. Our shop lights have who knows what for a light spectra. It almost certainly isn't set for growing plants. On the other hand, my grow lights have a spectra that is ideal for growing lights. So if I tell you online that I'm growing my African violence six inches from my LED lights, you don't know which one I have. And that's the problem we have today. The solution for this is fairly simple, but you have to learn something new about LED lights. It's not particularly difficult, and I'm going to walk you through it in this program. So how much light does a plant need? Well, think of a bucket of water. The bucket holds a certain amount of water, and I can fill that bucket with a hose that's turned down. So it might take five minutes to fill that bucket. Or I could take the same bucket, turn the tap way up, and I can fill it in 10 seconds. Light works just like the water. Plants need a certain quantity of light in the same way that they need a certain quantity of water. They need a bucket of light every day. Now we can provide that bucket of light slowly with a hose that's turned down, or we can provide that light with a hose that's turned right up. What's important from the plant's perspective is that they get a bucket of light every day. Now there are four things that affect this. One is the quality of light. Does the light actually match the plants? The second one is the intensity. How much light is reaching the plant every second? The third one is what is the distance between my plant and the actual bulbs? How long are the lights on? Each of these affect how much light my plants are actually getting. So let's first talk about the quality of light. You probably know that light is a series of different colors, different wavelengths. We got blue at one end, red at the other, and yellow and green in the middle. It turns out that the light that is most productive for plants is the blue and red light. That's what they can use most efficiently, and that's what we want to give them. There's a myth out there that says plants don't need green light, and that's wrong. They do need some green light as well. Now, in the old days, when we used fluorescent bulbs, we used to talk about the color of the light, and we represented that as a number. So you might have bought a light that was a 3000 K. The K stands for Kelvin, which is a measure of temperature. So the 3000 was a measure of the light quality. A light could be very yellow, or it could be more blue. So we had lights in the range of about 2,500K to 5,000K. I still see people online saying, well, I have an LED light and it's a 3,000K light. But that doesn't really tell us much about the spectra. We have to get away from those numbers. They don't tell us anything when we're talking about LED lights. When we're talking about LED, we want to see the actual spectra. And this is one way to tell if you're buying a true grow light or you're just buying an LED light that calls itself a grow light. If it's a real grow light, the manufacturer will give you that spectra. It'll show you the light that you're getting. And we want to see two good peaks in the red and the blue range. Now, how do you quantify this? Scientists have come up with a way to quantify light that 
plants use, and it's called PAR, P-A-R. That measures the quantity of light from a plant's perspective. It turns out that plants use different wavelengths than you and I see. So when we look at a light, this light might look very yellow to me because my eyes see yellow better than blues. Interesting, bees are kind of the opposite. Bees see blue light, but they have a very hard time seeing red light. So those red flowers in the garden actually look black to a bee. Well, plants are different too. They want blue and red light. And PAR is a measure of the light from the plant's perspective. So that's what we want to use. And the units for PAR is something called a PPFD. So we want to measure our lights in terms of PPFD, not Kelvin. The next thing we want to consider is the intensity of light. How much light is coming out of the bulb? As I mentioned, I measured my shop lights here and my LED grow lights, and I got a 10-factor difference. This is 7,000. These over here are 70,000. That's the intensity of light that is coming out of the bulb. Now, how do we get that number? Well, there's a couple ways. If you buy a true grow light, you will get something that's called a PPFD map. It will show you the PAR values under the light at different heights. And if you have that, you can use that. That gives you the numbers you need. Those are PPFD values. Now, many of the lower cost lights, which are called grow lights, they don't give you that. And that's a good sign that they're really not grow lights. You can go to the hardware store and buy shop lights. And those LEDs will grow light. You just have to know that the quality and the intensity of that light is less than true grow lights. All right, so you've bought one of these, and it doesn't say on the box what the intensity is. Now what do you do? Well, the solution is to measure it. And there you have a couple options. Now you can go out and buy yourself a meter that measures PAR. It's called a PAR meter, and the units of that will be in PPFD. Those units are kind of pricey, and home gardeners may not want to spend the money for one of those. Another option is to use what I have here. It is a less expensive meter. It measures light, but it measures lux or foot candles. Now, if I get the value of lux or foot candles, I can convert it to PPFD values. So this works as well. A third option is that you can now get an app for your phone that measures PAR light. One of the better apps is made by Photone, and it's actually a free app. So you can download that, put it on your phone, and then use the camera in your phone to measure the PAR values from the light. And those have been tested, and they're pretty close to being accurate. The third factor we have to take into account is the height between the bulbs and the top of your plants. As that distance increases, the intensity that the plants see goes down. As you raise the height of the lamp, the light spreads out as it comes down. And in any particular spot, like the leaf of your plant, you get less light. Lower that light, the plant receives more light. Raise it up it gets less. So the height is important. You can measure the height and incorporate it into any calculations you have, but there's a much easier way to do that. If you're going to use a meter, just place the meter at the height that your plants are at. So if you're growing them six inches from the bulb, measure at six inches. If it's at 12 inches, measure at 12 inches. So if I go through and I measure it at 12 inches and I find out that's not enough light, I'm going to change the height of my bulb, I can just play with my meter and lower it and raise it until I get the value I want. Then I know where to put the light. So although the height of the lamp is important, we generally don't use it in the calculation. The final parameter that's critical is the duration of light. How long is the light on for? Now we're trying to fill this bucket of light in a 24 hour period. Now you might think you could leave the lights on for 24 hours and give it maximum amount of light, but it doesn't work that way. Plants need eight hours of darkness. They need a rest period just like you and I. During that eight hours, there's a whole bunch of chemical things that go on in the leaves and that's critical for the plant to get ready for the light of the next day. So you have a 24-hour window, but eight of those hours are gone for sleep. 
Now the rest of it you can adjust. So you could leave the lights on for eight hours a day or 10 hours a day or even up to 16 hours a day. You can adjust that duration depending on the intensity of the lights. Now that you understand the basics, how do we get a number out of all of this? Well, scientists have come up with a special number, the DLI. It's the daily light integral. It's a measure of how much light is in that bucket. How much light does your plant get over a 24 hour period? If we know that value for the plants we're trying to grow, we'll know exactly how much light to give them. The DLI is easy to calculate. It's equal to 0 0.0036 times the PPFD times the duration in hours. So for example, if your PPFD was 800 and you had the lights on for 12 hours, the DLI would be 34.6. Now if you don't have a PAR meter to measure this and you're measuring foot candles or lux, you can convert both of those to the PPFD value. Foot candles times 0.15 will give you the PPFD value, or lux times 0.015 will also give you that value. Now this conversion factor is based on white light, and that's close enough for most gardeners. So that allows you to calculate the DLI for your light system. But what about the plants? What do they require? Well, here's a list of some of the more common plants to give you an idea what this value looks like. African violets, 4 to 12. Basil, 15 to 25. Lavender is the same, 15 to 25. Lettuce, 12 to 20. The Phalaenopsis orchids, 4 to 8. Peppers, now they're a highlight plant, 25 to 35. A lot of your house plants, like pothos, snake plant, and spider plants, they're all 4 to 14. My favorite streptocarpus, they like 7 to 12. Succulents, again, a highlight plant, 30 to 50. Tomatoes, 22 to 30. Now you'll notice that for each of these plants, it's a range of numbers. Plants are fairly flexible, so if you're within that range, you'll grow fairly good plants. Ideally though, you should aim for at least the middle of that range, or a little on the high side. That's particularly true if you're trying to flower these plants. So house plants that are only grown for the leaves, they're not quite as fussy, and they can take a lower light. But if you're trying to flower something like uh, African violet or streptocarpus, you want to be at the high end of that range. The more light the plant gets, the better it will flower. Streptocarpus is a good example. If you try to grow them in a window, they tend to stop flowering in wintertime because they're not getting enough light. Now I grow mine here under lights and so they get the same light all year round and I tend to be a little on the high side of the DLI range. So mine flower 12 months of the year. Plants that go dormant, ones that have tubers or bulbs where all the leaves die back, well, they don't need any light at all. And what about seedlings? A lot of people say that you should give your seedlings a lower light level until they get to a certain size. That does work for seedlings, but you don't have to do that. In fact, when I grow seedlings, the minute I see something green above the soil, they get the same light as an adult plant. I want to grow my seedlings nice and short and tough. After all, that's what happens outside. When seeds germinate in nature, they don't get lower light level unless they happen to be stuck underneath a larger plant. But if they're out in the open, they get full sun. So when I'm growing seedlings, I give them the same light as adult plants. So I hope this information has been useful to you. I really encourage all gardeners to start talking about the DLI and the PPFD. If you're growing inside using LED lights, these are the numbers that matter. Gardeners have decided to move forwards and they've adopted LED lights, which is great. Now it's time to also adopt the terminology that goes with them. If you'd like some suggestions for purchasing an LED light, have a look at this video right here. Happy gardening.